Yeah. Right? Yeah, but like, because yeah, yeah, like, well, but like, will that play like yeah, backwards? When it you, does. Like when, That's when you hear it, like play it on your phone or something. I'm on my phone on Google this thing. And how are we reading the slides? Like you're just having like the slides like on the other side. Like how are you reading or, the like notes? the speaker note? Do you have speaker notes on? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wait. Let me just use speaker notes. How, on my, how my setup is right now. Are we on? <gasps> it's like that. Hi, everyone. Oh, my God. We're live. It's live now. Oh, we're live? Um, yeah, we're live. Should we're I live. Have the live um, should I have the live up, too? Oh, my God. I can't even find it right now. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, God. My face. Hi. <laughs> I'm on my phone. So, uh, uh, we're live. Start. Okay. Can somebody, like, mute their phone or whatever that is? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. I get too many notifications from the cabinet board. Guys, we're live. Hi, guys. Bye. Hi, everyone. Um, How many people are on? So, oh, we're live. Hi. Yeah, we're live. Yeah, 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 we're live. Can we're I live. Um, Should I have the live up too? Um, oh my god, I can't even find it right now. Hi, everyone. Hi. And yes, before anyone asks, we're speaking in per first person because. In the definition of an immigrant above, it sh um it says that like um we are considered one or like one from the um past is the reason why we're here today. So like that's consider that's what consider us immigrants. And unless you're a Native American, of course, your um, or your ancestors were here before we settled in. So, as it is defined by the Google search, an immigrant is a person who comes to live permanently in a foreign country. A quick history is since 1949 when Columbus sailed the ocean blue and um, Native American populations had nothing, have done so by that logic, very little of our country consists of non-immigrants. In fact, to put the idea into perspective, 99.9% .9 of our population is comprised of immigrants, or at least people who are here because of an ancestor or a person who made a long, hard journey to get here. And we say this because of, um, because as of 2015, only 6.6, .6 million Native American and um, Alaska Native people living in the United States compared to the 327.2 million people living in the United States. So um, Native American and Alaska Native people make up only 0.019% of the population, meaning more than 99.9% .9 of the population has a connection to being an immigrant. Um, so, and um, the process of immigration is really long and hard and a very hard process for everyone to like collect. So Juan is an immigrant from Mexico and he talks about how his experience with um, um, experience with traveling to America and immigrating to America was. So when Juan was three, his mother left him and his brothers with his grandfather in Mexico. And she went to America to make money and so she can um, bring Juan and his brothers to America so they can have a better life and more opportunities. Um, Juan grew up in a part of Mexico where that was really poor. It was like a third world country. Um, he he didn't own a pair of shoes until he was eight and they he and his brothers were in a really bad place and didn't have um a right education or much opportunities since the green card process take can take up to 20 years which is a really long time his mother decided to 
illegally bring her sons to America. As um with um with the help of a coyote, which is a person um who helps people cross the border illegally, right? Um um she got Juan and her brothers to America and they signed some papers so Juan and her um and his brothers will be okay. Um although they had a better life in America, Juan had a hard time getting used to um new American life and society because the environment was completely different from what he had from Mexico and he was not familiar with it. Um when he became 12, he, he um while he was attending school, he had to get a job with a fake ID because they were really low on money and he didn't want Juan didn't want his mother to be suffering and taking the burden of him and his brothers. So when Juan finished high school, um so this is a picture of Juan when he was younger. He was in um Mexico and that's him and yeah. So this is Juan recently because Juan finished when Juan finished high school, he joined the military and he continued to work for the military even after he had a serious leg injury because he was really dedicated to um supporting his country. The reason why Juan and his brothers had to cross the border illegally from Mexico was that the green card process can take up to about 20 years. In order to apply for green cards, you must have family in the U.S., go through an interview and complete an application process, and also have some form of education. In 2017, around 22.4 million people had applied for green cards, but only 140,000 of those people were actually successful. 55,000 people win green cards through the lo a lottery process, and approximately half of those people have temporary visas, which means that um, people who are temporarily living with a visa in America might have the possibility to live there permanently. This also means that immigrants seeking a better life, like Juan and his family, um, also might not be able to continue living in the United States. It's important to note that visas are given out more frequently than green cards, which are uh, have a more limited quantity. A visa is an official document that allows the bearers to legally enter a foreign country for a temporary stay. And approximately 9.7 million temporary visas were distributed in 2017. Even though these visas are temporary and they normally last a couple of months, most people overstay their visas. And the reason for this might be to escape persecution or con conditions in their origin country, or they realize that America has more to offer to them. And this is precisely why more than 22 million people overstay their visas. Um, there are many refugees that come into America because they are in danger of America, but now President Trump has reduced that number to a mere 33,000. This means that people in need will be denied entry and continue to suffer from the tragedies of their home countries. Entering the US as a refugee is more difficult than with a green card or a visa. And this is because the refugee pro process is more harsh and long. Um, the res Resettlement Support Center or RSC aids refugees that come into America. So first they educate refugees about American culture and history. And once they are actually able to enter the U.S., they help them live near relatives and support them through refugee centers. So this ensures that refugees can slowly adapt to American life and eventually become legalized. So as you guys remember the story, Jerron is one of the seven, 47 million people out of the whole... Jerron is one that out of... Sorry, Jerron is one of the 47 million people who are suffering through this. But in other words, there's more, there's more than that. Today in America, immediate immigrants and first and second, first and second generation Americans and their U.S. born children numbers approximately 89.4 million people, or 28% of the overall population. Most of these immigrants face the same barriers and difficulties that Jerron has faced. These immigrants came to our country sneaky safety. They came. They came looking for work, 
for, for school and to be united with their families. However, almost a quarter of these immigrants are here illegally. Just as if their hardships weren't enough, these immigrants are faced with discrimination and racism by countless United States citizens. According to President Trump's senior policy advisor, Stephen Miller, significant reduction in wages have been seen for blue collar workers, and there have been massive displacement of African American and Hispanic workers. And other immigrant workers who compete against new, new rivals who are now pay even less. These people do not deserve this, especially after being separated separated from their families and abandoning their culture and traditions in their own home countries. For example, many immigrants that reside in California work intense hours every day and are still faced with lower rates and not than, than Santos. They are faced with danger of raving and the pestilence applied to the crops, which can sometimes affect their physical health. Overall, immigrants today are facing what Iran has faced and little action is being taken to help them. But these people are the people who drive the American society. Immigrants are the reason why our economic and reputation as a country is so great. They have worked really hard to get where they are today. According to the U.S. Bureau of the Labor uh, Status, quote, the labor force participation rate of the foreign born in 2018 was 65.7%. 65.7%. Many big industries rely heavily on the shoulders of the immigrants, and without their contribution, a lot of the products and services that we enjoy today will not be as ready as available. So, not only are they important in the food industry, they are also they also do many other jobs that are born to society. According to uh, censors, Bureau, immigrants represent 33% of engineers, 27% of, of mathematics, uh, uh, statisticians, and computer scientists, and 24% of physical scientists. This demonstrates that immigrants are are vital in the in the American society, and they and they help bring important changes. They are our next generation, and they are shaping our future through the discovery and medicine and science. Which is why we always say immigrants are the founder of America. Go on. but their safety and ability to live in peace has been in jeopardy. In recent years, Trump's administration have been trying to get rid of illegal immigrants and eliminate immigrants from coming to America. The leader organization, ICE, has been raiding cities nationwide and by unlawfully arresting illegal immigrants that are innocent. Borders that, the border peace that have gone ruthless and have been treating people like animals, uh, detention centers are prisons with less freedom and privacy. The actions that the Trump administration have taken put the backbone of American into en endangerment. Without immigrants, we lose in terms of America and the in the origin of our country. Um. So basically, this is ICE. Um. They're an organization that is causing a threat to the immigrant population. Um, so ICE is basically a federal agency supported by Trump, and they detain and deport illegal immigrants. Uh, Trump's administration has made ICE forces harsher than it has been in history, and they've made plans to make ICE raids in 10 major cities um, to deport thousands of people. Um, ICE has taken many people away from their families and has even taken away parents from their own children. Uh, these ICE raids are inhumane and are causing people to lose their own rights. And um, ICE officers are also um, impersonate as police. They impersonate themselves as police and they try to get into people's house without a warrant or they use warrants that are not issued by a judge, which is violating 
which violates the Fourth Amendment. Um, not only does ICE take away people from their family, but they make the society worried and uncomfortable. Even though people like us are American citizens, we have friends or family that might get caught by ICE, and that's a constant fear that we will have. Um, so since 66% were convicted by criminals, it means a third of the arrests were just innocent people that were working hard to live here. ICE took away and separated a family only because they didn't have the correct papers. They've also deported immigrants, but only 57% of them were convicted criminals, which means they uh, deported over 100,000 innocent, hardworking immigrants that were just trying their hardest to help their family. Now their family members have to spend the next couple of years in constant anxiety because once you get deported, you have to wait about five years to come back, which is devastating and completely inhumane. Uh, they are separating families without a valid reason, and they've even overspent the amount of money they've had for detention centers. Um, the Congress let ICE have enough money for 45,000 people, but they have over 50,000 people detained right now. Uh, this has led them to take funding from federal agencies by government permission. Most of the, t the detainees do not pose a threat to the society, and yet they are still being treated like animals. They are just innocent people that were striving to give their family a better form of life. <clears throat> So basically this map shows the planned ice raids that might happen in New York City. Um, although Trump thinks he could make ice raids at these places, um, our mayor, Bill de Blasio, is against these raids and is trying to help the immigrants in our community. So in this slide, uh, these pictures show ice um, just being harsh to people that are not even armed. Uh, they are even some little kids that don't even know what's happening. And ICE is arresting their parents right in front of them. Um, basically in this video, um, a person, this video shows a person knowing his rights and saving two undocumented immigrants from getting arrested.
Sorry. Um, so next we're going to talk about um, the border. So the border is a place full of tension between the border patrol and immigrants. Um, the border is a place where humans are having their rights taken away and are being abused daily. Border Patrol has thrown tear gas into the crowd of non-immigrants that are unarmed. People are protesting to seek asylum to get into the U.S., which they can do, but Border Patrol and Trump aren't letting them have that right. People at the border are put in makeshift campuses and are given foil blankets to sleep on the dirty floor. They are given minimal food and water. People are starving, and Border Patrol claims they can't do anything about it. In reality, our government has enough money to give the, these immigrants better living conditions, but they're against immigration and migrants crossing the border, so they don't want to help. Even though you might be against a belief, it still doesn't justify the fact that the government is starving people and putting them in harmful conditions. The border isn't the only inhumane part of this. Border detention is also letting people get treated like garbage. People are being put into large cases without any space. The flu is spreading between these closed quarter detention centers, but the U.S. won't provide detention centers with flu vaccine. This endangers everyone from getting severely sick or even dying, especially since everyone is literally stuck next to each other. Border detention centers don't let people have access to everyday hygienic products, such as soap, toothpaste, and even showers. Sometimes parents stand up so their children could sleep on the hard concrete floor. Babies have unwashed bottles and there aren't enough diapers. Many children are sick and are vomiting, coughing, sneezing, and spreading many viruses to others. After years of having no child deaths at the border, it was a shock to people that there were six migrant de child deaths in this year. Many reasons why children are dying is because of how they're being treated. In the previous slide, I explained how they weren't getting food or water and they have to sleep on the dirt floor. This basically is ruining their health and causing these children to get sick. In these cases, sickness is extremely deadly because people in detention centers are malnourished and their bodies can't fight sickness like, it, like they would before. Another reason for these deaths are because Border Patrol themselves. They have caused casualties by throwing tear gas and pepper spray. Up to 7,000 people have died from Border Patrol from 1998 to 2017. A lot of these deaths are caused by harsh border treatment and poor treatment of detention centers. America can make these places more suitable to at least get people basic hygienic needs and enough food or water to prevent people from dying of a weak virus like the flu. America can also treat these people with flu vaccines, but decided not to give people vaccines that need the most. They're keeping it, they're keeping the tension centers in poor conditions on purpose. There were about 4,500 reports on sexual harassment from underage immigrants. These underage immigrants are being held in the Office of Refugee Resettlement, ORR, and have been reported to being sexually harassed by the staff there. These underage immigrants are usually alone and not accompanied by any adult or guardian. Since they have no protection, these girls are getting harassed because they're vulnerable and don't have anyone to defend them. The staff says that they are against sexual harassment and that the staff should report each case within four hours. Since most allegations were against the staff, we don't know if they take sexual harassment seriously. These are some images of Border Patrol. You can see as they're shoving and grabbing people and being harsh, and these people are unarmed. The bottom right is an example of people sleeping on the floor with the foil blankets and the inhumane conditions of the detention centers.
here's a video of what exactly is going on at the border. So, um, do, um, during Obama's presidency, he released two programs to save young children from getting removed: the DACA program and the Dream Act. The DACA program is the is the Deferred Action on Childhood Arrivals. So this prevented um, ch um, alien children to like not get removed or deported from the country. And the DREAM Act is, um, stands for Development, Relief, and Education of Alien Minors. Um, so this allowed children, undocumented children, to get their education and to live like a normal American life. Even though they got treated like normal children and were um, got education like um, American citizens, right? they were never legal citizens of the United States. So these kids were referred to as dreamers. So problems started arising when the Trump, um, when Trump's administration removed the DACA program and the DREAM Act. This caused a lot of chaos for um, many dreamers. Some dreamers didn't even know that they were dreamers um, um, until Trump removed these two um, very important programs. Dreamers grew up as Americans and they lived here. They grew a stable life, but they never had legal citizenship. So this causes um, this caused around 800,000 dreamers to be in danger of getting deported by ICE. And um, speaking of ICE, ICE has been getting um, ha has been keeping people in detention centers for longer and longer times, which is um, causing the overcrowding problem and the bad detention, a uh, bad uh, conditions of detention centers to get worse. Um, this is this is also causing ICE to go over expenses, and is causing them a lo lot of trouble with the government. In 2015, ICE used to leave people in detention for only on an average of 40 days. In 2018, that um, that number spiked up to a, 
total of 250 days. That's a lot of time to wait in a detention center to get a trial or to get deported. Oops, sorry, my bad. This is which why being an immigrant in America should be held with pride and respect. Immigrant has done many things for our country, and we have become one. We have become one of the results why America is where it is at, at it is today. Immigrants have made so many accomplishments for us, and we have and have made us one of the top countries that everyone looks up to all around the world. They built a repetition with their hard work. They they have made achievements and brought new ideas from all over the world. The technology that that is that are available to us today, the buildings we live in, the major scientific discoveries, and much more were created by immigrants. Our foundation was made by immigrants, and our country was concerned the land of free. It was concerned the land of free before President Trump and his administration has had come to office. President Trump has taken away the land of freedom away from these immigrants and has made it even harder on them. Immigrants are now suffering consequences from supposedly taking away jobs and other opportunities from citizens. This is untrue because immigrants have a harder time getting jobs and usually have lower wages than citizens. President Trump is, is signaling out Hispanic immigrants and continuing to avoid white supremacy, which tells us that he is being biased and judging us based on our race. He's also implementing Typical stereotypes to certain groups of people, which is very unprofessional as a president and wrong to do. But a change is possible. There are many ways to support immigrants in this situation, and there are many organizations that are like Board Network for Human Rights, which helps people at the border get help and, and give them support. These organizations are really a good way to help immigrants and detention centers at the border. You can even spell the word about ICE and tell people about ICE. Um, I so they could tell their loved one what to do. A simple act like that can really save them from the harsh treatment people are getting. There are organizations to help kids from getting deported and fighting for the DHCA Act. These organizations inform young people about what's going on and get them more politically active. Organizations like these talk to government officers that support them, which helps prevent more immigrants from getting through such harsh conditions. Wait, me too. Oh, so immigrant against. Oh, sorry, sorry guys. So this is my side. I forgot. So immigrant activist organization. So quote cool. well. I just love to have to try harder. I just can't stop now. People are counting on us. Quote. This quote was said by a girl named Carmel Lima, an undocumented high school student. She started getting politically active when her mom brought her to dreams pro protest. Her sister didn't even have a social security number at the time, so she doesn't even know she could go to college. She started seriously getting active when her father was detained by ICE while his visa was still valid. She would take part in multiple protests and would meet up with senators and representatives that will help protest. Even though she was undocumented, she wasn't afraid to stand up and fight for the right cause. She has chosen not to hide in fear like other, undo like other undocumented immigrants like her. In her words, quote, what if this is the only country you ever know? What if you have never been outside these borders? Then you, then you forgot about these fears because you felt you belong. She believes in taking a stand in this situation and fighting for her and her people's right. Like her, we could educate ourselves on topics like these. These topics are really important to learn about so we can help people. Protesting, donating, and presenting for causes like these help us make a change. This is Cristina Jimenez. She is an Ecuadorian immigrant activist and the co-founder of United We Dream, or UWD. 
This organization works with other groups to help assess the needs of immigrant youth and their families. UWD is the largest youth-led organization on immigration. Here is a video that tells more about her and her movement. Um, so guys, so I'd like to apologize about the video. We weren't able to get the um voice up, so we like so we'll, we'll skip the video. If you want to watch the video, we'll send on links later. Uh, and we like to apologize about that. And now's uh, now's the world's turn. Um. Okay. So that was just a video talking about Christina Imanes, and basically, you, uh, her organization, so United We Dream or like I said before, UWD um, fights, for legal sat fights for legal status in the U.S. and helped President Obama establish the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals or DACA program. Um, and United We Dream focuses on keeping young Latinos um, politically active. They have more than 300,000 members and these immigrant activists have been trying to halt Trump's policies. Uh, Christina also lobbies to protect the 800,000 Dreamers from getting deported, as she won the Genius Award for her work involving immigration policies.
Um, so basically, uh, we can't um, sit around waiting for change. So we can be like Christina and support immigrants by doing events concerning immigration. Um, so before we talk about this month's theme, um, I wanted to talk about our single service project. Wait, 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 stop for a second. Sorry. Susanna, present this ring and you, you unclicked it. So, I think we're good right now. Um, so, guys, you apologize about that. And the partner's interrupt you since so. Oh, yeah. So. Um, it's fine. Um, so, basically, as I was saying, um, before we talk about this month's um, theme, I wanted to talk about our single service project so we could just give you, like, a, a better idea of what's happening right, with our club right now. Um, so, basically, our um, key club, we have a theme every month that like portrays one aspect of our single service project so i just wanted to say that like these days we have a lot of like um social economic political divides and um i feel like we're always so like upset and ready to um fight one another or argue with one another um and this happens so much to the point that we forget that there are people who actually need support they need guidance and I feel like um, we, this is why we chose our single service project of the year to be reviving humanity. Um, we wanna make our members and our community uh, more aware of the pressing issues. And um, we just wanna directly engage with you guys about um, issues like this. So this was why um, this month our theme is mixing the melting pot. And I feel like we've had pretty um, good quality events concerning immigrant communities, refugees, and just basically immigrant culture. Um, events that were about immigration include the CAV AYA Zion launch, which was about gentrification in poor areas and how immigrants are having a really hard time finding housing. Um, we also had our Chinatown Beautification Day, um, which was cleaning the streets of Chinatown. And yeah, I thought that was really important as well. Um, so for future events, um, you should come, you guys should come so you could be more active. Uh, we will be having an event by the International Rescue Committee called New Roots. Um, this event is about helping to make a garden for our immigrant community. Um, it's on August 29th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Woodside, Queens. Um, yeah, so stay in tune for that. We also have an autoimmune festival coming up. <laughs> sorry, there's a typo, I'm oh, sorry. Um, we also... <laughs> Sorry, my screen was like freezing up. Um, we also have an autumn moon festival coming up on September 8th and 15th um, at 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. It's in Brooklyn. So you can also learn more about African culture at the African Diaspora Dance. Um, details about it will be coming soon. If you wanna get more involved with the petition, you can come to our petition signing day. It will be next week and more details will come out soon. So if you guys are part of BTHS Key Club, um, the sign up for, there's a Google Forms link in the description right now. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna be open for like five to 10 minutes. So, so uh, fill out the form really quickly so we could get your attendance that you are here and everything. And yeah. Um um, also, any questions you guys have, please ask.
and we'll be more than happy oh, yeah, to answer. The time you could ask. Yep. No questions. Um, what is it? Uh, Wendy Ching um, asked, how can we tell the difference between a judge issued warrant and one that's not? Um, so for that question, right, there will be like, um, so the warrants that ICE have are usually um, issued by like Homeland Security Act, right? And they won't have a signature by the judge. An actual warrant that will actually give you permission to enter someone's living place or like a place you want to search will have a um, signature by the judge from a court. So yeah. Anything? Any other questions or can you put the sign in the name of the Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions you guys have or anything else you guys are concerned about? Um any I think we're good. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think, I think we're, we're good. All good. Since, yep. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed our um, advocate um our workshop, right? And we'll be having a petition soon that all of you guys can sign that could help um make. So basically, this peti uh, petition we are making right now on like is going to be based on detention centers and treating people better on detention centers because right now things are really bad and um, it's it's oh conditions are really bad in detention centers people aren't getting adequate amounts of food um no they're like barely any hygienic products it's like really um it's a lot of kids are sick and people are really tired and sleep deprived so we're going to try to help that by making a petition for it. So we once we finish the petition and everything, we'll send everyone a um, link and you guys could all sign it and gain five points from signing it. So, yeah. Other than that, um, Sign up link is in the description right now. So go sign up once again. Make sure you guys um are complete the form and make sure you guys are um uh, present and but thank you everyone for coming to our workshop and we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're just...